In this video, we're going to talk about automated end-to-end -end testing using Cypress and Cucumber, and we're going to use Next.js as our application, but you can use any application or framework or library of your choice. So this can be applied to React, Vue, Angular, all those great front-end frameworks, and they can be backed by an Express app or a Nest.js API. A or another framework um, that manages an API as well. So it's full stack end-to-end -end testing. So the testing of Cypress is testing your application as if it was the user. You will actually see it drive the browser. Let me show you. For those of you who haven't seen Cucumber, this is what it looks like. It's written in plain English, but we're going to go into the details of how to set it up and how to use it shortly. I just want to give you a quick demo now. So let me run the end-to-end -end test. So there's two ways that it can be run. It could be run headless is how you would run it on uh, CI, for example, GitHub Actions, but also you can run it with the actual app of Cypress running. And the beauty of Cypress is it will take screenshots on failures and also videos, so you can actually see how it failed. So we've got one feature, so one feature that we're testing. It does have multiple tests in it, and I will show you that shortly, but we can click on it to run it via the app. This is not running headless. We will run it headless later on, and you can see it's actually driving the browser, right? My hands are up. I'm not touching the browser. You're actually going to see it load the default Next.js app, and it's going to navigate to the About page because that's what our test shows. Let's just give it a moment to run. It says navigating to the about page. Given I'm on the forward slash page, the homepage, you can see the homepage and about's now being clicked and now it's on the about page. Um, so you can see that it's run the tests and they're all green. Oh, we've got one failure. That's great. So what is the failure, Eddie? Well, let's have a look. So I see the about page in the H2. Well, if we inspect that, I'm guessing it's not a H2. So let's have a look at that and see. So if we inspect that, you can see it's a H1. So let's go have a look at this test. Well, let's have a look at the test and it says the first test ran, I navigate to the about page and, and that was a, a green, that was a, a pass. You can see the tick on the side and now we can see go straight to the about page, uh, go straight to the about page. I open the about you know, URL, um, about page in the H2. So up here, it's a H1, down here, it's a H2. Okay, so let's change that to a H1, hit save. By hitting save, it automatically reruns the tests, hands up here, and you can see tick and tick. So we can click on it to expand. And we can see that it did see the about page text in the H1. So I think that is great. Now you've seen a demo, let's get into how we can set this up. If this video sounds interesting to you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. So why write automated tests? Well, automated tests allow you to test your entire project really fast each time you make a change. That's super great because if you make a change in one area, you probably confident that it hasn't broken anywhere else but are you? But say you change something like authentication, are all pages still protected? What happens if you change logging? Are all sections still logging? To go through and test all the happy paths, all the successful things like login, send a contact form. But what about the boundary condition? What about if you try to log in incorrectly? Does it fail automatically? Do you get shown the failure page? Why have you trying to send that form incorrectly? Is validation running? Well, you can't test this every time yourself, but if you have automation, which increases over time as you add a new feature, you get more automation tests. Each feature probably has four or five automation tests because like I said, you want to test a happy path as well as a boundary path. Each time a bug is fixed, you write a test for it. So therefore the bug never resurfaces again. Don't get one of those bugs that keeps reappearing. You really want to make sure you reduce your bugs and show that your project is super professional. And writing automated tests doesn't have to be hard. As you can see, we wrote it in plain English. And we'll be doing that with Cucumber. It's an abstraction on top of your testing framework. It doesn't replace it, it's an abstraction on it. If you wrote your test directly using the testing framework you're using, in this case Cypress, you would have to use something like the page object module design pattern to make sure that you made your life easier moving forward. So test didn't give you the hassle and stress that everyone thinks it does. It's, it's there to help you not to make your life harder, but to make your life easier. But if done wrong, yes, it can make your life harder. So this is where Cucumber comes in and it's great. You can write your tests in plain English. And the idea is you give yourself a scenario and then you say, given when then. So the scenario is the, is the title and it can just be anything you want. But the given is what are the prerequisites? So given I'm on the homepage, let me show you an actual real example that we're using here today. So 
the scenario is navigating to the about page so that we can write anything we want in there just to describe the test or the scenario in this case. So given I'm on the, and you could put home here and in your, in your code behind the test, look at what that is and it would relate to a forward slash, but I'm just keeping it as a forward slash here. It makes reuse a lot easier. So later on, as you can see, we've put about in there and we don't have to change any actual code behind the test, which is also known as step definitions. So each one of these is a step and you need to define what it means, but you can have variable and multiple variables in that. So here you say, given I'm on the, the forward slash page, the home page, when I click the about link, then I uh, see the about in the URL and I see about page in the H1. So those are the three actions. So it's given, when, then, and then you can have multiple conditions in each one by putting the word and. We've reused the same Gherkin syntax here down below, but we haven't added any extra code for this. And I'm going to show you this right now. So Eddie, how are we going to do this? Well, we could set up Cypress from scratch on a new Next.js project. It's really straightforward. It's a few steps to do that. Um, it is literally install uh, Cypress and run a command and you're there. But I've noticed Next.js does actually have examples. One of their examples is with Cypress. So I was thinking in this video, could we contribute another example, which would be with Cypress and Cucumber? Yeah, you guessed that right. So what I've done is I have forked this project and I've cloned it. And so I didn't need to install Cypress. It's already there as part of the example in Next.js, but we do need to install Cucumber to use it with Cypress. And there is actually a Cypress Cucumber preprocessor, which you can use. And it's really straightforward to use. To get started, you run the npm install as you normally would, installing any dependency. And then as it says in the Cypress plugin index, copy and paste this done that. I don't need to show you all this. I'm sure you can copy and paste quite well. And then in the cypress.json, this would be looking for JavaScript files, but you will change this to feature files. And then you need to add this to your package.json and that's it. So this is how it was before. If I go back to the app spec, this is the default Cypress test that's in the Next.js example project. You can see, should navigate to the about page. It visits this URL. It looks for this link and it should include about in the URL. And then it should get the H1 and check for the title. The problem with this, if we wanted a second test, we would have to copy this. And if we ever change any of the page, it would cause this break, which is quite fragile. The great thing about Cucumber is we would write something very similar to this, which would be called our step definition. So you can see this is very similar. I'm going to show you how this ties into the Gherkin syntax, which is written in plain English. But the great thing about this is you can reuse this over and over again. So I click on the string here, link, as we've used over here. You can see it's in the quotes. But the great thing is, if you ever wanted to change anything, make this more strict, more flexible, more bulletproof, whatever you wanted to do, then we would change it in one place. And everywhere where this was written, would be updated and be benefiting from that. So it's really, really important and really useful. So here we've got two tests, but actually in the example one, they only had one. So now if we wanted a second test, similar to what we had in our Gherkin, we would then have to duplicate this line. And yes, we wouldn't have the, the click. We wouldn't need the click because we would navigate directly to the about. Should navigate, should be on the about page. And we still want to check the URL and we still want to check the H1. But if anything ever changes, you have to update all the tests. So if you wanted to make, like I said, make it more strict or flexible, you have to update everything. So let me just save that. But I wanted to show you the equivalent. So you can see from the Cypress commands, they're exactly the same. So you can see Cypress visits, Cypress gets, and it's exactly the same in our step definition. So Cypress visits, Cypress gets. But you can see here in the visits, this URL is in this part of the code. And the problem with that is if we ever want to do a check, you know, Cypress does all the checking for us that the page is loaded. But say you want to do something, you would have to update every single one. However, because we've abstracted that out, we would only ever do it in, in one place, which is on, on this visit. Say we want to console log something, for example. So each one of these relates to one of these exactly. But whatever's in the quote, we replace with a string or a number depending on what you're passing through. And then Cucumber passes it through to the function and then you can do the same check that was being done before 
in the actual Cyprus test. So that's very, very similar. So being written in plain English, not only can everyone in the team get involved in adding new tests, when you try and plan your features, you could actually write it in this syntax already. Therefore, it could be copied and pasted from the issue into the feature file, and then you can run it, it will fail, and then you could go and add actually the code to the project to, to make it pass, and therefore it'll go green. As running end-to-end -end headless, we don't see the browser run, and this is how we'd run it on CI, and it runs a little bit faster as well. And you'll notice down the side, in the Cypress directory, we have screenshots and videos. So if there is a failure, a screenshot and a video will be taken. So therefore, on CI, or if you're running it headless locally, you can easily see what has gone wrong. I don't understand why people would not want to do this. It makes your life easier, it allows you to work more efficiently, it doesn't slow you down. This actually allows you to speak to your client, to speak to the product owner, whoever it is, to understand what is going to be built. And then you can work with you know everyone in the team to get this, and you can make sure you get those regression tests as you move forward. I've seen so many projects that as they grow bigger, they're like, oh yeah, we can write a form, a really complicated form and a wizard, and we can do that in two hours. And then six months later, to do the same thing takes them like two months. And that's because they've got so much debt in the project that they can't confidently refactor anything. It's a real mess. And automated test allows you to confidently make improvements and refactor things. You know the rest of the project works the same. You can do things and add tags. So you could say something like, uh, this would be the about page. And the great thing about tags is if you were running this locally and it took quite a long time to run, you could run just your module, but on CI, it would run the entire test suite. There are lots of great things that you can do like that. I purposely didn't follow the tutorials and documentation line by line for you in this video because Cypress and Cucumber have great documentation and you can follow that yourself. I wanted to show you the benefits and how I use this and how you can use this too. So use this in your projects. Remember, it adds value. It makes you go from junior to senior. It makes you look more professional. You don't have to do this for all your projects, but I highly recommend it. It will allow the project to have longevity and people contributing to your project know they haven't broken anything. So when they make changes, they can run the test locally. They, When they raise a pull request, it will automatically run these tests. And that way they know that it still works and they haven't broken anything else. If you want to have a look at a real project that is using this, you can go to the Eddy Hub project link free and you can actually see we have Cypress here and it's exactly the same as what you've just seen. So you can test this 404 page. Do you know if your 404 page works? Test your search. You know if your search works. We have things like this. So I see Eddie in the text section, you know, and I see Kunal. I search for Eddie. Then I expect to still see Eddie, but I expect not to see Kunal. You need to really test that your application is actually working. The other thing I want to quickly show you before we end is the GitHub action. You can run this on a GitHub action really easily with um, some YAML config. And you can see here in the build, you run the E2E test like I did locally on the command line. And you can do that with um, just a few lines of, of YAML config. So GitHub actions are your friend as well. I look forward to chatting to you in the Eddie Hub Discord, link in the description below. Let us know about your projects and your automated testing journey. If you're a developer, you still need to do automated testing. It is really important. And actually you can use Cucumber to test your API in the exact same way that we have done. I actually had a video on this using Cucumber and Panctum.js, link in the description below. You can test any API. And you might think, well, if I'm doing end-to-end -end testing in the UI, why would I want to test my API in next year? Well, there are certain things you will not be able to test from the UI. What happens if you want to get a 404 on your API? Well, you can't unless you make a page on the front end to do it. Whereas if you can test the API directly, then you can pass any query parameters, URI, anything you want to do, post, get, delete, and do all those tests as well. So in the Eddie Hub API project, we are actually using Cucumber. Do you want me to show you? Because I'm sure you don't believe me that it is exactly the same. That's the beauty of this. If you learn how to do this, you can use it for other projects. So in the API project, we're using Nest.js, as with an S, not an X. And if you look at the features, you can see we actually have the feature files, and this looks very, very similar. The difference here is you can do formatting. So when you're testing the rest, we do format it slightly differently. We do use tables. It makes it a bit easier to pass in the, the JSON file. So it's the field and then, then the value. But you can see it's very, very similar, given, when, then, and using the and. And the only thing new is this. But in my other video, I do go into more detail on how to do this. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps. Let me know what you think in the comments below. See you in Discord. So if you wrote uh, your test in, say, straightforward Cucumber, uh, if you wrote your test in straight, uh, if you wrote your test in straightforward,
it will allow the project to have longevity. I don't know. For those of you who haven't seen Cyprus before, this is what it looks like. It's written in plain... Oh, Cyprus. Shit. For those of you who haven't seen um, Cucumber... Oh, God, I can't talk. 